was like, you're actually teaching them how to provoke these men to violence that these men really don't want to commit. And then that's how you call the police. That's how you get him removed from the household. That's what the lot of these women are looking at. Some people do want to watch the world burn. By pushing for discrimination against their fathers, brothers, husbands and sons, they've bequeathed misery. I don't know how deep you want to go, but it's worth looking at the NATO Strategic Communication Centre publications about narrative strategy and narrative warfare, because it is based on military tactics. <laughs> So am I, you're saying my police officers are lying? Is that, is that what you're saying? I believe there's a misunderstanding in this situation. Police officers for your that vengeance I'm, on your domestic situation. I'm not okay. trying to... I'm from a very large Irish Catholic family, lots of babies in the family all the time. But he had never touched a baby until his son was born. So he was absolutely terrified. And every time we were asking for postnatal support, they said, yes, we've got this for mum. Mum can go to this club. This person can come and visit mum. And I would say, OK, make it after three o'clock so that dad is here because I can bathe the baby with my eyes closed. But dad has never done it before. And that was flagged as potential domestic abuse. Absolutely shocking how much completely innocent male behaviour was flagged as a risk by my local authority or by my local hospital. They tried referring me to support services, but if he needs help with these things, what you need to do is report them as abusive. They said, OK, you need to go and get all his paperwork from his office, all his payslips, all his bank statements. We can't help you if you won't provide that documentation. So you either have to steal it from him, which is illegal. Several staff were saying to me, just go into his office and take it and bring it to us. And I was like, what's the other options? And they said, you accuse him of abuse and we can put you on the emergency housing list. According to the laws of this country, I am a dangerous criminal. Their behaviour is in line with a consistent and malevolent history. They have huge power. Her American supervisor set up a vigilante campaign against me and they recruited lots of other militant zealots and at some point there were probably hundreds of people chasing me. Men also have this fear of losing their home, losing their job, losing their children. Please just come talk to me guys. I know it sucks that you don't get to see me. I, I... I've tried to do everything I can do. They're insinuating that I'm a murderer. Various people demand that I stop teaching and that I not be allowed to do any teaching and they succeeded. There's only four more minutes. Please come talk to me. They eventually drove us out of our home and the police said, this sounds bad. Maybe you need to get out of town. Usually you're going to have to leave the house that you live in. So you're going to be homeless. Misery that cosplays as opportunity self-obsessed victimhood that cosplays as consciousness, resentment that cosplays as empowerment. I file paper after paper after paper to get to see you guys, and still nobody will listen and nobody will let me see you. Please just come talk to me, please. A war against the family, which means a war against children. Clearly it's not working. I love you very much. I wish you would come and talk to me. Hey, Everett, come talk to me. Come on, bud. Don't go away, okay? Goodbye. Uh, no, Everett, please don't. Wait. A narcissistic and myopic and foolish war that's caused more harm than good. One of the women in the groups was, well, quite a few of them, they have husbands who have high powered jobs. My ex girlfriend claimed I called her a silly tart. And they're frankly looking for their divorce service. That's why they're there. Well, it's verbal abuse, which makes it uh, domestic violence as a crime in this country. They're trying to get out without it being their fault, despite the one, they're the one that's shagging the ball away most of the time. The house, the child, um, alimony, everything. So they basically lost everything. Wonderful. And a few days later, the university fired me 
That was after the vigilantes had published their uh, open letter. It's a central premise that men are perpetrators of violence against women. Feminism is a war on men. A war on women who love men, as well as on men and women's perceptions. That's one of the standard techniques of social justice outrage mob culture. You are called names, you are shunned, you are threatened. I founded the Los Angeles chapter in the year 2000, and I was president for 10 years, and we were very active. We did a lot of things, including lawsuits that changed laws in the area of domestic violence uh, and legislative advocacy for, pater for attorney fraud victims. A lot of moral support for a lot of men who were uh, going through very difficult situations. Mark was killed by somebody coming to the door posing as a FedEx employee and gunning him down and then a week later another attorney who happens to be a men's advocate is suspected of going to somebody's door dressed as a FedEx worker knocked on their door and opened fire those who knew him described him as an oddball attorney and in his writings he raged against women in the men's movement we put crazies in the outlier area. We put them, we marginalize them as much as possible and push them out, unlike feminism, which seems to promote crazy from within uh, to run the show. Feminist organizations have amazing power within politics, within laws, within funding. They have huge power. But what you're gonna see, since the New York Times has already drug ABFM into this mess, you're going to see the fake news media again, like they did with Elliot Roger, like they've done with other people, try to make a false narrative, creating a connection between violence and the men's movement. Hollander's history raging against women being a men's rights attorney. They are setting the narrative now uh, that, uh, of course, uh, ABFM and the men's rights movement is a violent movement. Senior law enforcement officials tell News 4 the FBI is also now looking into a possible connection to that killing you mentioned of an attorney in California last week. Mark Angelucci was apparently another men's rights attorney. The moment that Roy Den Hollander exposed his instability to us, we didn't want anything to do with it. That fact won't ever be seen in a New York Times article. They will go for the jugular with this and try to establish that this is somehow violence that naturally and organically emanated from a movement that was corrupt and hateful to begin with. Murray Strauss was a feminist conducting data for feminist movement and found the stats that women perpetrate domestic abuse at equal measure to men. Made up a story relating to me committing sexual assault and other unsavory acts towards her and filed a falsified report at Federal Heights Police Department. I'm there. I see this as a domestic between you and her where you guys just can't get along and you want vengeance on her. No, no, no. I'm saying, like, since then, there was domestic violence committed against me. There was crimes committed against me. Okay. I'm I not... think your phone conversation's done, sir. Sarah showed up at my house after giving birth with a police escort for a civil standby to gather all of her belongings, meaning I missed the birth of my child over the pettiness of a violent woman. That's not recognized by feminism because it has one central law that men perpetrate violence against women in order to oppress them. So they can't let it exist. Sarah brought my son Benjamin over to my house and kept her body turned between us, refusing to let me hold him, then attempted to blackmail me, stating I must drop the assault charges against her in order to see him and hold him. This is the only time I have ever seen my son, albeit briefly equal amounts of vic male victims of domestic abuse. That topples a central tenant of feminism and brings the whole thing crashing down because all of a sudden there is equality, but equality in perpetration of violence. And that, that can't exist for, in order for feminism to exist. Can you go out and convince another 10 women that they're being abused? And we'll tell the police commissioner that you need £22,000 a year to run your own centre. If you 
you step outside of the prescribed belief system of feminism, you are absolutely lambasted. This is my, no, this is me. This is me saying, I tried. Domestic abuse is not a gendered issue. Feminism is a hateful supremacy movement based on the belief that women are disadvantaged as compared to men, that this is a societal problem and that it needs to be fixed. By any means necessary. You didn't exist. You don't exist. You're not there.